Father God, we thank you for your holy word this morning. We pray, Father, that you would illuminate, give us a clear understanding of who you are, that we might not understand who we are. We can only do it through your word, Father, because that's our interest to you. We pray this morning for all of Dalton, Dalton Knights, all the officers. We pray, Father, that your will will be done in their lives, in all of our lives. We thank you, Father, for our bishop this morning. We thank you for all the Reverend Thornton. We thank you for the persistent pastor, their pastor this morning. God, we thank you for all of them. You're grateful to each and every one of us, and we are grateful to you. It's my honor and my pleasure, Father, to even uh, that you would even choose and pick a, a person like me to even expound on your holy word. And I'm grateful and thankful to you, Father, for allowing these things to happen. It could not be without you. We go right into the lesson this morning, saints. This is the word of God. And it's the title this morning, Ram Thorne has given you the title. It's a, a display of divine glory. A display of divine glory. Glory. The golden text says, Jesus said unto her, Say I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shalt see the glory of God. See? If thou would believe, thou shalt see the glory of God. A few things in between, if thou shalt believe. See? But she believed. And God showed her that glory. If we believe today, we will see his glory. It's like all the works from that saw God's glory. We gotta understand what it is. But his glory is all about. We are going into this quarter here today. You know, we started in this book, uh, John, uh, the initial uh, uh, testimony of John, the calling of the first disciples, the miracles of Canaan. Jesus walked on the water, his teaching of the bread of life, his claim to guilty, his rising, his raising of Lazarus. That's where we at. We've covered all of these things in this book this month. That's a sort of conclusion of this lesson today. That all through the lesson, all through this book, we have been teaching, and John has been teaching, telling us the purpose, the reason why he wrote this book. See? It is that we might believe. He's shown that Jesus is God in all of these things that he had done. And it's the last one that he's going to do is the is raising the Lazarus. He glorified the Father in all of his actions. From the testimony of John, the calling of the first disciples, the miracles at Canaan, the walk on water, the teaching of the bread and life. All of that showed 
the glory of God that Jesus was shown. And he always said whatever he did, it wasn't about himself. It was not about himself. And he said, I'm setting an example for you that you may know who the Father is. I'm going to reveal the Father to you through me. I am doing, I am doing the things that glorify the Father. It ain't about the one that's doing it. It's about the one that sent him to do it. How can a preacher preach if he had not been sent? How can a teacher teach if he had not been called? I, you know, we need the little principles that we have to put into place in order to understand the Word of God spiritually. John is talking things spiritually. Jesus is showing us the miracles and things that spiritually happened that God only him can do. No, no, no man can do it. He showed it from even from the, the in the wilderness. Moses talks to the rock in the rock. Water. Any archaeology or anybody can tell you, you can't get water from a rock. You can get all these other things, you ain't gonna get no water. But Jesus did. That's to let you know who he is. <laughs> he made the rock. He created it. He used it to produce water. Only he can do that. God. That's the glory of God in the eyes of us. This is a powerful lesson, all the lesson. Anything about Jesus Christ, if you get a, a little glimpse of it, it's more powerful than you can ever understand. Me. I don't know about you. You might think it, but I know. All right. I can talk all day right now, right, just on that alone, but I have to go into the lesson this morning. Amen. Amen. Throughout each text, we have seen that Jesus' ultimate mission and motive was to bring all the glory to his heavenly Father. Thus it seemed fitting that we should end with this here in John 33, 44, where we see Jesus raised the dead man to life, demonstrating conclusively his victory over the grave and pointing ahead to his own impending death and eternal victory over the grave on the behalf of all who trust in him. He endured that on the behalf of you and I that trust in him. The aim today, the fact is to see this, this here is to see how Jesus, every word and action, glorified God the Father as he raised Lazarus from the dead. These are facts. The principle is this. To see that all of life is an opportunity to glorify God, since they is, since that is his purpose. The application is this. To make every curriculum, circumstance, to make every circumstance of our lives an opportunity to glorify God through worship of Him and obedience to Him. See? You have to be obedient to God. You can't look at the weather, man. You have to be obedient to God. You can't, you, 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 if, it's, if, it's a, if it's a will, that's a way for God to do it. If it's in his will, there's nothing going to harm you if it's in his will. And you will know if it's in his will. 
if you are in his will. See? You and me, and my word is in you. That's, that's, that's part of John writing too. Wasn't it? No. But anyway, we move on. Move on into the lesson today. As we will see here. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, 34, where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come see. Jesus wept. 35. One of the shortest scriptures, right? Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And some of them said, Could, this, could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have called that even this man shall not have died. Listen to that. Those are standbys. Now let's get a little piece of this here. We got to remember this here. We're starting at 33. That Jesus said that this ladder was dead. It was read back then. And uh, in the old, let me say in the chapter. Yeah, the chapter before uh, 33. We read about that. And we said, so when Mary, 32, said, Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down on her at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou had been there, my brother had not died. See? Let's go, let's take you to, let's take you right over to where Jesus said in John, it's expedient that I leave. Because if I don't leave, the comfort will not come. I, I won't, I, 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 can't, I can't send the comfort. You see, you got to realize one thing about Jesus. He was full of God and also he was full of human. In this verse, it's coming, you're going to show his, he's going to show all of his human power. Emotion, everything that you have and I have. He asked her, sir, as we, we go on down and said here, says, and Jesus said for some of them weeping. And uh, she came to him groaning, and he groaned in his spirit when he saw that. See, he realized this here. Now, as I was saying, it was expedient, he knew that said, look, he said, it's expedient, you know. That I, I, I have to leave. Why did he have to leave? Because he couldn't, as human being, and he was certainly fully man, he could not be at one place and another in no town. So he can't be in Baltimore and DC at the same time. He can't, he can't do that in the human. So that's why he was saying, it's expedient that I leave. If I don't leave, if I leave, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit here to you. See, the Holy Spirit can be all over at the same time. You see? See, that's why I'm not going to go into that in the deep part. You can understand, if you get, get into it, you can see why Jesus had to leave. He was expedient that he leave. Because if he didn't leave, he didn't send the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit came, it, can, it works with us now because the Holy Spirit is all over, everywhere. He's not in the form of a man. He's in a spirit. Omnipotent. Is that the right word? You see? So Jesus married them, that they didn't realize that. But he did. That, that's, that corresponds especially with this expedient that he had to leave because he wanted to send the Holy Spirit here that they wouldn't be doing. Then he, then he went on to say here, as he, he asked him, said, look, and Jesus therefore saw them weeping 
and the Jews also were weeping, who came with her, he groaned in his spirit and was troubled. He groaned in his spirit when he saw that, and he was troubled for that. Groaned and made a noise in his spirit. You see? And then he says, where have you laid him? That's showing him as a human. Because he didn't get there when they buried him. As a matter of fact, she, she met him on the road, the only way there. So she said, he said, look, where, where you buried him at? He already know, but he showed his humility, humanity, humanity right there. You know, if we go somewhere and say, where is it? Where did you burn him at? You see? That's what he's showing here. And then he said, they, said, he, they told him, said, look. They said unto him, Lord, come see. And Jesus wept. But Jesus wasn't wept. He was wept. Why? Why did he cry? Humanity. He loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. And he's seen the pain that death can bring on. That sin, he saw the death, he saw sin in his action. That what it does to us. And that grieved him. He cried not because of lather of death. He knew what was going to happen to that. He cried because he saw what sin had done to the people of God. It troubled him. Death is not a beautiful sight. Amen. No matter how you dress it up, put suits and clothes on it, try to make it smile, it's not something pretty. Because death, that's why they said that they had to put that to sleep forever. You put that to sleep by living and trusting in him. And realize it's all right to moan. It's all right to cry. He did. For the loved ones. Because he saw. He see. Right now we see people's Carrying on as if nothing is wrong, bringing all kind of theories and, and, and whatever. It's a sad thing to see that many souls are being lost because of sin, unbelief. But the ones that believe in Jesus knew, you know, I know. It's sad. You see? And that's why Jesus said, look, I got, I, 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 I got to go. I have to leave here. Because if I don't leave, the Spirit is not coming. And the Holy Spirit at that time needed to be come. Had to be come. Because they had to reveal things to us. It would, could not do that while the Spirit of Christ, God, was here. Because he was that Spirit. That, you see, it could not come while he had to leave. He cried, not because of lies of death. It's because of what sin had done to the people and how they moaned and groaned. And we see that right today. When we go to films, it's a painful thing. I know. My mother, my father, my sister, brother, it's hurt. And, and God knows that. That's why he wept too. He wept because he see what sin has done. But as we read the scripture, we'll understand that. To us, death is just a separation. But the Spirit of God lives on right with you. So if you understand God and understand him, you wouldn't carry on such a man because it, it's not happening.
He showed and did things to the living, not for the dead. He knew what was going to happen. Let me move on. I always get caught up. I don't get a long short lesson, a short lesson, or whatever it is. I just keep it. I can't, can't, can't seem to get the bounce. <laughs> can't get the bounce to it like a lot of people. Anyway, let me go on down into the lesson some more. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. You're going to see that Jesus had, they knew. Jesus was. And some said, and, and, and some of them said, could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind, you remember he had did that miracle? That must have left a great impression on them. The man was blind and Jesus opened his eyes. So he could, said he uh, opened the eyes of the blind, have called that even this man shall not have died. In other words, why didn't he save this man? <laughs> we always got that. See, we, we got people just like that. Well, if you can do this and do that, why, why you can't do that? If you can do all these miracles and everything, why don't you come down off the crawl and save yourself? Amen. See, we got to learn to follow the rules of the Bible. Jesus said, I'm here to come, my father. It ain't about what I can do. It's what who sent me to do. See? We have a mission to do. And about us, it's about the mission that we have to do. He sent us out on a mission. And that mission, he tells you what he wants you to do. It ain't about you, me. It's the glorified one that sent us. Who sent us? Jesus. Who sent Jesus? The Father. Who gets the glory? The Father. You see, the glory to God, the Father, it's just like the light to the sun. Or just like, what is it? Heat to fire. The inseparable. That's what the glory to God is. It's inseparable. He won't get that glory. Nobody else gets that glory but him. We must do things to glorify him. That's why I always said, even when I had my little, you know, trust was going on, we do a little breakfast. I said, look, I'm not worried about who paid for it. I do things to glorify God. If God is happy with it, we'll get it. It was taken care of. Nobody would have it. Everybody ate. It's to glorify God. That's what we do. That's our business. That's our place. It's for his pleasure he got he created. Okay. Now. As we move on, and then there's this, this is people say, why couldn't he do that? You know, if he did the blind, why couldn't he do it? But they had no idea what he had in mind <laughs> to glorify the Father. And Jesus, therefore, again, grown in himself, coming to the grave. It was a cave and a stone laid upon it. Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he's dead. Excuse me. For he has been dead for four days. Okay, Jesus said, said unto her, Say I not unto thee, that if thou believest, thou shalt see, that shall, uh, show, <laughs> shall show, see his, see the glory of God. In other words, in my little language, he put it this way. Jesus said unto her, didn't I tell you that you would see the glory of God if you believe? You remember back in this other lesson, he said, believest thou this, that if, it, if you live, if you go back to it. He said, didn't I tell you that? Then I tell you that you shall see the glory of God if you would believe. Amen. It's always if you believe Jesus and trust him, you, 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 all the trust.
troubles that you have, <laughs> it ain't your trouble no more. You see, the old song said, lean on me. Well, Jesus said, take your problem, bring them to me. Take upon you my yoke. My yoke, not yours, nobody else's. But to take that yoke upon you. It ain't hard. You just got to believe and trust. In other words, you got to commit yourself. Self has to be going out the way. It ain't about you and what you believe. With God. It's what Jesus says. Believe what he said. Mary said, believe with that. If he tell you, do it. Whatever he tell us, do it. And he tell you in his word. Trust him. Uh, you have to do that. If you don't trust him, you won't see that glory. He told Mary, he said, believe it now, this. You see? Then, number 41 said, then they took away the stone from the place where the body was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee. Listen. He lifted up his eyes and said, Father, her thank him out. I thank thee. That thou has heard me. And Jesus said that. You just thank him for listening to you. He didn't say that I thank you for doing it. I thank you to even listen. See, I, I give God praise and honor for even allowing a wretch like me to even understand his words. Mm. Amen. I didn't do nothing at all. To deserve this. Oh, yeah, indeed. Yeah, I did all the wrong things I could do. <laughs> you prayed a lot, you thought. <laughs> oh, yes, I did. <laughs> oh, yeah. I pray a lot now because I know, I know what he can do. I give him the praise. I give him thanks for even just listening to me, whether he do it or not. He's the almighty God of this universe. Never sleep or slumber. But yet he's going to hear a little old wretch like me. He said, thank you, Jesus, for saving my life. Thank you, Father, for touching my wife, my children. Thank you, Father, for touching my brothers and sisters. See, because I know he can do it. And if anything be done, it's done by him. You see? Now, as I was reading 42, oh, I was going over there. All right, 43 says, and when he does had broken, uh, spoken, he cried with a loud voice, loud and come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and uh, foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound uh, about with a napkin. And Jesus said unto them, Loose them and let him go. And I'm going to wrap it up fast because I done went over my time. And uh, this is a beautiful lesson. That's what we need to do. We need to get these grave clothes off of us. Jesus has called us, and we got a new spirit. Get the grave clothes off. Loose them. Let them go. See? That's what he told to do. You see? So this is, uh, uh, I could go on, but thank God that he allowed me to go this far. I pray that you would uh, get something from God's word. I pray that uh, we get more of understanding of who he is. Because he's always told us, you know. He showed us the glory of God. He raised Lazarus. He did it after four days, the body was snaking and everything else. But he showed the display of God's glory for the people, just for the people to know and to understand. And he do it all the time. 
So, Father God, I thank you for your word this morning. I pray that somebody else who never went out to, to receive it. And I thank you, Father, for using me and every, all the people that you use to carry your word out. Give us more strength and knowledge to do it. I pray, Father, that the ones that hear me and understand your word, that they will move and some of themselves together and share it with somebody else. I thank you, Father, for all the things that you've done and all the things you've done. And I pray, Father, that you save the souls that's closest to the grave. Amen, amen. I just want to say one little thing. We got the books. We got the books here in the Sunday School book for the new portal that's coming up. The church is open, so if you want them, you guys to come into the church together. The ones that want the Sunday School. Thing that have breath. Praise Jesus.